Good afternoon to you and welcome to Tuesday Live Bible Study with Karis Dumfries. Yes, a very good afternoon to you. We were expecting to have Cecil Paxton with us this afternoon. In fact, half an hour ago, he was here as we were doing a test transmission, but we seem to have lost contact with him. But nonetheless, Jasmine and I will still be looking at questions of faith for healing. So stay with us this afternoon for this live Bible study from Karis Dumfries. <laughs> Welcome to Caris Bible College here in Scotland, where this afternoon Jasmine and I will be looking at the whole topic of faith for healing. Because it goes without saying that a lot of people do have doubts when it comes to uh, healing. The whole question, can I expect God to heal me? In fact, that's a question that throughout our, our ministry, Jasmine and I have been involved in the healing ministry for the last 30 years, and actually our, our knowledge and experience in the healing ministry is accelerated in, in the last seven years uh, through our contact with Cecil. In fact, a lot of what we practice is a result of, of Cecil's ministry, wouldn't you say, Jasmine? That's right. Well, he had such a lot of experience that when he first came to visit and we saw how effective his ministry was, we started to take notice and say, OK, this isn't just academic and hope that somebody is going to change uh, straight away when you pray from the, for them. But Cecil obviously expected and did see people change straight away. So immediately we had to reevaluate our, our way of thinking, our way of expecting, which is another way of describing faith really isn't it it is because faith comes through hearing and as you open up the scriptures and see what they say mm. we see the way that jesus responded to everyone who came to him for healing because you know jasmine will know this a lot of people would say to me oh jesus didn't heal everyone you know as though jesus went into the hospital wards and emptied them and and that is true but listen to this Everyone who came to Jesus was healed without exception. That's right. And sometimes he would say, would you like to be healed? Do you want to be healed? And he would ask them a question that would elicit faith from them. And when they said, yes, or I want to receive my sight, bingo, uh, that wasn't a, an issue anymore. He would pray for them and they would receive. So I think we got rid of a lot of our unbelief and we continue to get rid of unbelief. I think I thought at one point that unbelief is if you really don't believe in Jesus. But now we find out that unbelief can hinder you from receiving. Even if you do have a strong faith in Christ Jesus, you know the scriptures. It's just bringing it into making it practical. Hello, Cecil. It's great Hello. to have you. It's great to have you with us. We thought you'd lost just for a while there. Yes, I think I was on the wrong link. I went to the second link instead oh. of the third. My well, apology. It it is great to have you with us now. We, we were just sort of laying the foundation of saying that there are a lot of people that doubt that Jesus actually wants to heal them. They have big question marks, but really scripture and particularly the life of Jesus demonstrates that God wants everyone healed. What, what would you say to that? Oh, absolutely, brother. In fact, um, we already are in the place where healing belongs to us. It's already been given to us and it's been given to us spiritually. And so if we don't identify with the cross and identify with Jesus and what he accomplished for us at the cross, then we're simply identifying like an unbeliever would is not having something, but we're in a completely different position and place spiritually that an unbeliever all things have been given to us in Christ. All our needs have been met in Christ Jesus. And so when it comes to receiving, then we're receiving something that already belongs to us. Wow, you know, Cecil, I remember when I first heard you say that and my sort of my mind went tilt a bit as I thought, thought to myself, well, how can I be healed if my body is still in, in, in pain? So it, it takes a bit of unwrapping, doesn't it? Because most people will say that they're only healed when the pain is gone. Oh, absolutely, brother. That's a person that, um, well, they're According to Romans chapter 8, they don't realize it, but they're carnally minded. They're simply relating to life from the human perspective based upon what they are experiencing physically. 
-hmm. And if you're going to receive from Jesus, then it's a receiving's about him. Receiving's not about us. So anytime we're trying to get something that's already been given to us, we're telling our heart we don't have it. Oh, wow. We're going to limit Jesus in our life when we do that. So unwrap for us a little bit what, what do you mean when you say that we already have it? In what sense do we already have our healing? Well, if we go back to the foundational truth found in, in Christ Jesus, you can look at Isaiah 53, 4, and 5. You can look at Matthew 8, 17, you know, present example, 1 Peter 2, 24. These are all different examples. There's, there's so many scriptures, of course, from you go from the Old Testament right into the New Testament, the New Covenant, and, and there are just many scriptures talking about healing, even manifestations of healing. But when it comes to you personally receiving we need to look to Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. And we need to make receiving about him and not about us, which means that he's already been to the cross. And the mm -hmm. same way we have received our righteousness as a gift, because we came into a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, Romans 10, 9 and 10, the moment that our mouth confessed what our heart was believing and the Holy Spirit birthed the life of Christ on the inside of us in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, we have become a new creation in Christ. We are no longer, as Ephesians tells us, that we are sitting together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And so if you're talking about heavenly places, then you're talking about something spiritual. In other words, um, my mother, who is elderly now, she's in her 90s, and she's in preparation for going to heaven. And I was just talking with her yesterday. And, of course, she doesn't want me to pray for her to be healed. She says, no, I want to go to heaven. So, I mean, she she hasn't got any serious physical problem that is, you know, a poner in the context of any pain or kind of thing like that. She's elderly, but she is looking forward to going. And I was just being humorous with her. And I, I told her, Mom, you know, because she's beginning to lose her appetite and she just eats because she knows she needs to at this elderly age. And and um, I told her, Mom, you're going to love the food in heaven. And she looked at me and said, how do you know? You haven't been there. <laughs> and I said, Mom, the food in heaven is heavenly. <laughs> you're gonna <laughs> Anyway, she agreed with that. So, But we're talking about heavenly in the context of Jesus and the spirit, who we are in him spiritually. We, you know, we're together with Christ, as Ephesians 3 tells us, we're together with him. So we're not separate. We've got to stop identifying with our self-life and where everything's just about us in life just because there's a problem in our life and begin to look to Jesus and identify, look to him and allow the Holy Spirit to be our helper, to teach us and to help us in that process so that we can identify with what Jesus accomplished at the cross because at the cross, he gave us his righteousness and exchange took place. We don't even have our own in relationship to God. Jesus did it for us, but also at the cross was healing. Mm -hmm. It's the same communion we take at church when there's the body. In other words, the, there's the blood in the body, the body in the blood. In other words, we celebrate Jesus and we look to him in remembrance of what his blood has accomplished, our righteousness. But at the same time, they go together. It's at the cross. It was given to us at the cross. You were healed, 1 Peter 2.24, a past tense type of a form of communication. In other words, Jesus has already been to the cross. So when it comes to receiving, we need to receive from a place of freedom, a place where the problem belongs to Jesus. And because I'm in Christ, I belong to Jesus. Physical problems do not belong to me. I, I can sh I'll give you a, a live example of what I'm talking about. I had a lady minister call me on the phone who had fallen down a flight of stairs and she needed to minister that night. And the kind of stairs at that hotel was, I believe, was outside stairs in the States, which means they weren't very nice stairs. They weren't softly padded. They were concrete and metal. So when she fell down those stairs, she seriously hurt herself. And the only reason she called me because her husband wanted her to go to the hospital. But instead, she called me. And the reason she called me was this. She had a supernatural experience with, with an open vision from the Lord when she fell. When she fell, she saw herself actually not falling, but walking down those steps normally. And in the open vision, 
she saw Jesus falling and hurting himself severely as, as he fell down the stairs. And the Lord gave her that for the benefit of her heart because that's Matthew 8, 17. That's 1 Peter 2, 24. That is, that's Isaiah 53, 4, and 5. That is a picture, a living example of Jesus revealing in an open example, a vision of the words, a, a picture, of, you know, for the a benefit for the imagination of our heart where we can see what he fully accomplished so that even though we physically are going through something, we can choose not to identify with the physical, but instead look to Jesus and realize, no, Jesus suffered terribly for me. And the suffering we went through was a lot worse than what I'm going through. And it was, it, you know, it was the sin of the world. He became sin and the physical of what he endured more and more than any man. So Jesus, the separation he experienced, what he experienced was way worse so we need to look to Jesus and we need to disown, take significance off of the things we go through in life so that we can magnify Jesus within our heart for the benefit of our heart so that our heart can open up to him to receive the manifestation, the physical manifestation in the natural realm. Very good. Um, I remember, Cecil, when you came to our church once, there was a lady thinking about communion and what Jesus went through. Uh, and, and it not being about us. I remember a lady being very concerned because she had been denied communion in a previous church because her behavior hadn't been up to scratch, so the church leaders thought. And she was concerned that she wouldn't be able to take communion. I remember your answer was that communion is not about us, but communion is for us, and that pointed her to Jesus and what he had gone through, as you were just saying, on the cross, and how that was a terrible suffering, but that brought her um her salvation that brought her acceptance and it brought her ability to receive from the lord in communion and and that is a very um, important statement that i've heard you say many times that healing is not about us but healing is for us and that's, that's a great explanation that really seeing ourselves as who we really are in christ and benefiting from the suffering that he went through and uh, receiving the reward of the health and the life and the salvation that he has, seeing ourselves in him, it makes it so much easier to receive from him. Hey man, I'm in total agreement with that. That's excellent. Mm. That is very true. Because really, when we think about becoming Christians and we've received the Lord Jesus into our hearts, I mean, that's more than just sort of religious jargon. There's a reality that has gone on there, isn't it? That the spirit of Jesus has come into our innermost being. So everything Jesus is and everything Jesus has accomplished, it is now deep on the inside of us. Absolutely including the healing that he, he won for us on the cross. Absolutely. Anytime we identify with us in relationship to our problems, then we will establish beliefs. That's just, this is what the Bible calls unbelief. It's a belief from a human perspective to where we are forming judgments, what truth is to our heart in relationship to what we're personally experiencing. And when our, well, when the beliefs are established from that type of perspective, then if they're the kind of beliefs that are, well, we've been severely challenged by our problems, maybe. And if they're not minor problems, but problems that have the potential of dominating our heart, and we establish a relationship with the problem, then we're opening up our heart for the problem to dominate our heart, for our problems to become more real and more of a reality than Jesus. Amen. Amen. This is why it's so important to take significance off of the circumstances of life by looking to Jesus and allowing the Holy Spirit to help us for Jesus to become magnified in our sight so that when in our heart, he becomes greater. I mean, you know, we were talking earlier just, you know, and of course in you as well about the example of communion. And there was a minister that travels like myself that came to me and he was going to receive healing, a manifestation of healing because of what he heard God was doing through me. He said to me, anointed minister, you can get me healed. And you know what? I didn't pray for him right away because he was making receiving about me and not about Jesus. But I did help him to prepare his heart to receive from the Lord. And because I was talking to a minister who was not a novice in the word of God, it didn't take him that long. In fact, he sat down and the first thing I told him to do was begin to mock and laugh and make fun of your problems. 
because within his heart and all the things he told me that I didn't, I haven't yet shared with you, of course, but all the things he told me, he's had the, the problem magnified within his heart to the point that he felt like that, uh, well, he's been healed before. He's gotten other people healed. And, but here's two problems that just wouldn't go away. And he has them at the place like they've got power, like they won't go away and he needs something more he hasn't got. But the reality is you've got Jesus, you've got everything you need. And I needed to help him to put his focus back on Jesus. So the first thing was to really go mock and make fun of the problems so that he'd stop respecting the problems. He had them at a place of prominence and he'd just take them down, but he would magnify Jesus and put Jesus at a place of prominence within his heart. So the second thing I had him to do was to come to the place that never, ever, ever again will you take a physical problem and make it greater than Jesus, his body and his blood. And you need to realize that when I said that, that man fully understands the death and the burial and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. All kinds of scriptures. In fact, I'm not telling him anything he doesn't already know. All kinds of scriptures could open up to him, of course. And I'm simply putting his focus back on Jesus. The same thing we all need when we go through challenges in life. Every single one of us, it's, it's never where you arrive at a place where you're perfect. No, we live a life where they're constantly dependent upon Jesus throughout our lives. It doesn't matter if we're a baby Christian or we're someone that's been walking with the Lord all of our life at whatever age we are in our maturity and walk with the Lord. We need Jesus. Amen. We need to live a life with a dependency on him. Because we're all, we all continue to grow, don't we, day by day? And some days we think we got there and realize that, oh, we're still on the journey. <laughs> Absolutely. But you know, I went, I went back to that gentleman because he did what I said. He said on the front row where I had been, prepared his heart. When I finished praying for people in the altar call, I went over to him. And it was the first time that someone prayed in those problems. He immediately began to leave. Ah. Mm -hmm. Because when I put my hand on his head and release the life of Christ within his body with authority, releasing power, then the reason those problems were leaving was because he's already healed. Yeah. And most people don't identify that way when it comes to receiving from the Lord. They don't understand. In fact, I, tell you, I, I question believers all the time when I'm praying for them and some, they're getting better. Many of them are getting better quickly or they're getting better, you know, with the problems leaving. But they don't tell me many times it's leaving. They just tell me what's still there. Yeah. And that because, reveals the heart of a believer that um, their problems are more real than the word of God. Yeah. Because it, it, I mean, you, what you're basically saying is that they, the, the physical is dominating and we can understand that. I mean, we can understand it, but because we hit our thumb and, it, you know, all of our attention goes to that throbbing th thumb, doesn't it? And, you know, our, our heart, heart takes, misses a beat or something and you and, and our natural yes tendency and I underline the word natural tendency is then for all of our emotions all of our thoughts to go to that or somebody t talks about the pandemic or or, or cancer or, or whatever there's something in us naturally that sort of fixates almost on that and what you're saying though is that as as believers full of the holy spirit uh, yes. that is our attention. If we focus on the greatness of God, I'm thinking of that verse of greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world or, or our sore thumb or our cancer or our COVID. Greater is he in every situation. And there are so many different scriptures that the Holy Spirit can bring to mind, which will help us focus won't it, on the truth of who we are and get, get our focus back on that. And I like what you said about the Holy Spirit helping us to uh, in that process because he's a a, a very present help <laughs> he's inside us he's able to connect with us and enable us to open up our hearts to receive how how would you help uh, explain to somebody how that works cecil well john fourteen six is is just a um excellent scripture to begin the, to understand how the holy spirit relates to us god the holy spirit when he helps us the scripture tells us that he is our helper and the scripture goes on to tell us that he will teach us and it tells us he'll teach us all things the same way all of our needs have been met in christ jesus philippians 4 19 the same way john 14 6 the Holy Spirit, there's not any area of life that he won't help us. There's not any area of life where he won't teach us. There's not any area of life. It's everything. It's all things. So we need to realize that we need to in fact, establish in a relationship with the Holy Spirit would be very, very important. Because most Christians, 
they want God to do something for them, but they don't really establish a way of relating to God by the Holy Spirit and open their heart to allow him to help them. In other words, what I'm saying is this. You could limit him simply because you've got a way of living life where your heart's trained to relate to life a certain way according to your human perspective. And when it comes to the Holy Spirit, you may want him to do something, but you may not be very open if every time he attempts to help you, you reject him and turn to yourself. So it's very beneficial for a heart to establish a way of relating to him. A place where when he speaks, it's we humble our heart and we yield to him and allow him to teach us because the thing about the Holy Spirit is he will not force himself on us. God is not a controller. He doesn't control. He doesn't manipulate. God is love. And understand the nature and character of God is beneficial for our heart, for our heart to open up to him so that we can humble our heart and yield to him and value his voice and put his voice at a place of prominence over our voice. My. Yes, it does take humility, doesn't it? And I, I like what you say about valuing God's word and God's, the Holy Spirit's bringing the right scriptures, the, the appropriate scriptures to us more than the physical symptoms or the anxieties about the symptoms. So it's, it's humbling our own heart and letting go of some of the things perhaps that we were thinking and allowing truth to penetrate our hearts. Um, and it's a process, isn't it? But, but it doesn't have to take too long. Absolutely. In fact, what's beneficial for us is First Peter 5, 7, that we will, well, part of the process of being humble, a humble heart is what we're talking about. We're not talking about an exterior of humility. We're talking about within the heart and how we relate to God, the Holy Spirit. By humbling our heart, then we will cast anxiety upon him. Because if you trust Jesus more than you trust yourself, then you will cast anxiety anxiety upon him instead of choosing to hold on to your problems according to what you believe about them where we choose ourself over jesus and sometimes we do it without even realizing what we're doing mm. or like the example that uh, was used earlier you know that we touched on some people face problems and today we're talking about physical problems of course but it can relate to many areas of life but sometimes we face problems in life that are not small problems they are serious challenging problems like people that endure pain or people that are enduring the physical challenges of the physical symptoms of the problems and sometimes more than one problem and it's constantly with them and they're constantly dealing with it when you know so when people are dealing with serious challenging physical problems then we do need to understand that we are a human that lives on this planet we are a spirit, soul, and body, and for that reason, then, within the area of our soul, the mind, the will, the emotions, yes, emotionally, we can feel our problems when they're challenging us at that level where we feel something emotionally, and because there's thoughts in relationship to the problem, and any time our thoughts and our focus is on the issues that are challenging us, then yes, those issues have the potential of us making us feel something and in our emotions when our feelings that which are on the inside of us you know that's why our problems can be so real to us and it seems like the promises are so far away sometimes because the issues are dominating our heart and our emotions are a reflection of that the mind the will the emotions so why sometimes we make wrong decisions when we're emotionally being emotionally under the weight of, of the issues and we're having an emotional response to how we feel about the problems and things we're going through in life and so we sorry do you have a question well i was going to say because so often people think that that anxiety that feeling is an indication of reality uh, uh, well, and but it's not is it that's the very point that you're making uh, it's, yes. it's almost a deception, isn't it? Because if, the, if it's true that health and healing is in our spirit, uh, then if our emotions are, are telling us, no, I'm, I'm ill, I'm worried, I'm anxious, uh, well, that, then our emotions are, are, are lying to us, are they not? Yes. Truth is found in Jesus Christ. It's a fact there's a problem. We're not denying. Denial is not faith. So we're not denying that there really is a physical issue that is challenging us because you know it's a fact but it's not truth 
and we would have this understanding that truth is only found in Jesus Christ. Truth is not found in a human judgment. When we come to this understanding, then we learn to take significance off of what we're going through, even though it's challenging. We're not, we're not uh, saying that someone that is uh, dealing with something emotionally is, is uh, immature or something of that nature. We're not putting a person down. No, anytime we face a challenge, then it has the potential of having that type of effect upon us in the area of the choices we make, our will, you know, our emotions and how we feel about things, our thoughts, because, you know, there's questions. You see, uh, while I'm on the area of the thoughts, I'll say this. Sometimes we ask questions in relationship to the problem. And this is where we get into trouble because anytime you ask questions in relationship to the problem, then, you know, if you answer that by forming a human opinion, a human judgment in relationship to the problem, and you form a deep judgment on the inside and truly believe the way you see it is the truth, that's where we get into trouble because if you ask questions in relationship to the problem, then, you know, it's not about Jesus, it's about us. Amen. Mm. And a good illustration of that, of mm. course, is uh, when people don't feel that their body is, is healed in the time frame that they want it to be healed, say, uh, they're, not, they, they're not experiencing those physical freedom uh, that is God's desire for them. When that happens, sometimes they come to a, a judgment, a, a speculation, a false conclusion, well, perhaps it's not God's will to heal. And uh, they might even start sure. preaching. No, it's not God's will to heal because I haven't experienced it myself. Exactly. When th that is a, a typical mm -hmm. example of, of making our own judgments and not letting Jesus be, be Lord of the situation. Exactly. There's an old saying that goes this way. Um, you ask the wrong question, you'll get the wrong answer. <laughs> and sometimes we do. We ask questions in relation to the problem and we're not looking at the word of God. We're not looking for truth on in Christ. Instead, it's a human judgment, a human opinion based upon what we're experiencing. And yes, it's true. We're experiencing something physically. Again, we're not denying. But the fact is this. You guard your heart. Proverbs 4.23. Keep your heart with all diligence. For out of your heart springs forth the issues of life. So we learn to protect and guard and keep our heart with all diligence because mm. if we don't and we just allow truth to be found in our human circumstances then we're relating to life much like an unbeliever even if we talk the christian language even if we go to church we're still not abiding in the word instead we're abiding in our self-life we're becoming carnally minded in relationship to the issues of life and again it doesn't make us a bad person our righteousness is in christ you know, one of the most important scriptures in resolving issues of unbelief and resolving by putting well, by putting our focus back on Jesus is Romans 8, 1. There is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Yes, it goes on to talk about walking after the flesh, walking after the spirit, you know, but again, that is a choice. But there's still that first part of that scripture is truth and reality. There is no condemnation. We've got to come to the place that, no, we, I'm in Christ, so it doesn't matter if I make a mistake. I'm already forgiven. I'm already righteous. I'm already loved. I'm already accepted. So I can just quickly forgive myself and look back at Jesus, and he's 100% for me. He's not against me. He doesn't relate to me according to my mistakes. I mean, think about how we would relate to our children. I mean, if our children made a mistake and we disown them, there'd be something wrong with us. We don't really love our children. No. But no, his love, you look at Luke chapter 11, you'll discover that God's love for us is far greater than our parents' love. Yeah. Amen. He is love. Yes, there amen. is no condemnation. There's no shame. There's no guilt. So mm. quickly allow that truth to be established deeply within your heart so that you're able and willing to put your eyes back on Jesus and open your heart to him because so it the is, Holy Spirit will help you. 
Amen, because it is so liberating to know that there is no condemnation, that, it, that it's not about our performance, whether we've been a good, bad boy, or a, a big bad boy, or, a, or even a, a good girl. It's, it's, it's all about Jesus and what he's done, isn't it? And mm. the, the sooner we're able to appreciate that, um, then the better, really, on, on, our, on our journey and our walk with the Lord. That's right. This is uh, reminding me of Moses uh, lifting up the serpent in the wilderness when those snakes were nipping at the Israelites' heels. And they, they really were poisonous snakes, and the Israelites really were suffering because of them. But bec when the Lord told Moses to make a, a bronze serpent, lift it up on the pole, but it's when the Israelites gazed upon it. It's they, they didn't just give a cursory glance. They looked steadily at that, which represented the curse, which represented everything that was hurting them. Um, but it was a, f a foreshadow of Jesus who was going to take all of that um, sickness, well. the, yes, and yes. the pain on the cross. It was when they looked and gazed upon that and took their attention off the snakes. And you imagine sure. how difficult that was when they were being actually bitten to just look at that and put all their attention on that snake on the pole. And that's, that's when they were healed. And that's such a strong picture, yes. isn't it, of what Jesus did for us. And so we look unto Jesus. That's our favorite scripture here. I know you've encouraged us with it in the past. Just look at Jesus. And that's gazing steadily at Jesus. And with the Holy Spirit's help, our attention can stay away from those things which have been bothering us. You know, this, one of the things the scriptures there, in the, in a, and I'll pick right up on where you just left off there concerning the snake and the image and looking to Jesus. You know, the scripture doesn't tell us how many people didn't look at the snake. And what I mean by that is this. If you go back as a whole and look at the hearts of the children of Israel and every time they were faced with problems, look how they related. Look at the fear that came out of them. Look how the unbelief that came out. And, you know, all through that time, I can give many different examples, of course. I mean, look how they turned on Moses, the, the crossing before the crossing of the Red Sea. I mean, look after the crossing, how they're celebrating. But look when they didn't have water. And, and I mean, look how they again turned on Moses, what came out of their hearts. Every time there was something bad, a circumstance that challenged them, there was a tendency to see the bad before they can see the good. And this is what I mean. You know, here the scripture makes it very clear. Everyone that looked they didn't die. They lived. By looking to Jesus, they received a manifestation of healing. There wasn't one feeble person among them, but when the snakes came, look, they had freedom. So what I mean by not looking is this, fear. Anytime there is fear already pre-established in the heart of an individual, if they don't take the time to establish the truth of God's word with the help of the Holy Spirit within their heart, Andrew says it this way, long before you got a problem, and many of us, of course, say that because it's so beneficial to establish your heart and how you relate to this area of healing in life long before you have a physical problem that's challenging you. Instead of waiting till you have a problem to go to look for truth. But the people that looked or the people that knew to look, and even though a snake that bit them, and I'll use this example, you know, on one of my trips, I've ministered several times down in the country um, of Belize. In that country, when it went out into the country itself, into the, um, um, well, we would call it woods, but they it has a different terminology there because of um, all of the predators and things and monkeys and snakes. But there's this one snake that is out there that they call the five-step snake. If you get bit by that snake within five steps, you'll be dead. Oh, wow. That's how serious it was. Mm -hmm. So I figured, well, he buys me, I'm going to run. I said, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no. But you look to Jesus. The, out of the words, something that's within your heart under that circumstance of pressure, if you experience something that severe, that bad, if you're capable of your first response is to go to Jesus. See, their first initial response for those that, that even though it was a serious problem, if the reality, the snake biting them made them run around to people and run and scream in fear then they probably would have died unless somebody could have grabbed them and stopped them and said, look at the pole and help them to put their eyes back on Jesus. That's what we do. Many, of course, what we do when people call us or people come to us for personal ministry is 
we are focusing them, helping them to see Jesus in a way with the help of the Holy Spirit. That's not just the intellect. It's not just intellectual information, but it comes truth and reality to their heart to the point that their heart will open up inwardly to Jesus because we've, we're together with Christ. We've already got his presence on the inside of us. Jesus dwells within us. And that's how close our healing, our manifestation of healing is. We've got the kingdom of God within us. Our body is a temple, the Holy Spirit salvation, 1 Corinthians 3, 16. If we just yield inwardly to Jesus, wham, we can receive from the inside. Amen. I've got several scriptures. I can explain that in detail and really give you a picture, an example of that area of you know, where you, we can get so used to just focusing on Jesus to where we just look inward. We just we just open our heart to receive from the inside. One would receive a manifestation of healing just between Jesus and us, Amen. where it's not coming from another person where I'm releasing power into their body, but they're receiving from the inside, not the outside. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Well, we're coming to the end of our program. Uh, we're glad that you'll be back with us in, in the new year for a, a special program then. We'll ask you to pray in a minute, but let's tell people that you've got some books that are available uh, to view. Uh, here they sure. are, How to Receive Healing from God. And a lot of the examples that you've shared with us today can be found in that book, as well as ex an expansion on yes. that teaching. And then Issues of, of the Heart, that, that's all about not making speculations, isn't it? Not coming to our own judgments about life, uh, but trusting in Jesus and keeping our eyes focused on him. Mm -hmm. And they're available from your website, which is clpmi.org. Yes, Amen. praise God. Yeah. Let's just tell the viewers about uh, what's coming up next week. Uh, we've got a Christmas special when Jasmine and I will be looking at John chapter 1, In the Beginning Was the Word. That's at 4 o'clock next Tuesday, the 17th of December, on this same channel. And then Cecil will be back for more questions of faith on the 4th of, of January. We very much look forward to having you with us then, Cecil. But perhaps uh, we'd invite you to, to say a prayer for people uh, as we come to the conclusion of this first program with you. Sure, I'll be happy to. I'll just encourage you, those that are opening your hearts right now for prayer, just put yourself in agreement with me according to Matthew 18, 19. I'm gonna release the life of Christ, power of God, and for those that have been hurt through the circumstances of life, I'm going to pray right now for the Lord to heal your heart. So, Jesus, we just give you glory and give you honor and give you praise. Lord, I thank you right now by the power of the Holy Spirit that you're taking away the pain, the emotional hurt, the grief, and the pain, and the sorrows from people, Lord, that have, that have just been offended, been hurt through the circumstances of life, Lord. They have formed deep judgments where they felt like you let them down or they're just confused. I just give you the glory right now that your peace that passes all understanding is descending upon them going right down through their body to guard their heart and their mind. And Lord, that great grace is being released to them right now that you are merciful towards us. You love us and that you're healing their heart and taking away the pain and the hurt from the circumstances. And Lord, with the authority you've given us, I rebuke infirmities. I command right now, just loose people from their problems and their physical issues. And I command right now, oppression to go, physical problems. I rebuke them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I command people's bodies to be whole. And I just release your life, Lord, giving you the glory that right now the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus have set people free and is manifesting within their physical bodies right now, setting people free and physical issues are just leaving. They're losing their ability to stay right now, even as your life, Lord, is destroying that yoke and setting captives free and healing those physical issues. They're leaving because, Jesus, it's you doing the healing. You're the one setting them free, and they are healed because they are healing. And we give you the glory for that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Great grace being released. Thank you, Jesus. Thank praise you, God. Lord. Hey, Amen. praise God Amen. indeed. Sets the captives free. And it was for freedom yes. that Christ has set us free. So we can yes. truly revel in that freedom and find that liberty to focus 
on, on Jesus. Cecily, it's been great to have you with us and to share such insights from the scriptures and from the things that the Holy Spirit has taught you from the scriptures that you've seen work as you've ministered healing in Jesus' name to people mm -hmm. across the world. Uh, what a blessing you are. We're so glad that you'll be with Thank us you. again in the new year as we continue uh, this conversation. So, folks, that's all we've got time for this week. Uh, join us again next week for our Christmas special. Then we'll have a couple of weeks off and Cecil will be back with us on the 4th of January. So we'll say that's all we have time for for today. If you'd like prayer, here's the numbers of Andrew Warmack Ministries prayer line. People there will be happy to pray for you. But for now, we'll say cheerio and see you again next week.